this particular draft. Syndra Rise already banned on red side. Very interesting to see what sips through. It won't be the LeBlanc. And that's four mid lane bans. So we're finally going to start to see the extended bench. Does this mean that Orianna rises in priority to her first pick? It's kind of hard to say. There's a lot of power left available. Lee Sin, for example, been perma banned so far today, is available at first pick if Dardock wants it. And I'm sure he would love to get his hands on that one. I mean, as he, he claims in North America, best non import Lee Sin or cleanest, whichever term you want to use. With all the uh, top so lane, it is something they could go for. With all the top lane imports, the best NA top laner is going to be an interesting crown to give. <laughs> but for now, they're taking their time with this one. So Hermes trying to formulate what would be the best first pick. They could go for something, you know. The least uh, is the really safe. big dynamic pick that is left up. You have to heavily expect it to be taken. Twitch is an interesting AD carry choice that's available as well. I mentioned that the Orianna was the highest tier mid laner available, has been a safe blind pick throughout the course of her history, but this will hand over the Lee Sin. And Samsung actually first picked Karma first time out, so a lot of power going over to Samsung Comfort as well. Yeah, they're going to bring that in yet again for themselves, and then Lee Sin picked up by Ambition, so now Dardock will have to see what he wants to run Predictably, uh, that. it's going to be the Rek'Sai. Realistically, I uh, played it in the previous game, actually looked good on it. It's the Initiator, Encourage the Colossus makes a lot of sense, so basically, the way this worked, the rock, paper, scissors worked here was that they are confident, I would imagine, with the Rex, unless they have something crazy against Lee Sin matchup, and they've actually thought, okay, what is left in the meta to pick against the Orianna blind pick? That may be the big question that's answered. Somehow, I don't think we're going to see a Ramus rolling in. That would be uh, a little exciting, though, if Ooh. we didn't see that. I mean, the Rengar is something we've seen a couple of times from Dardock in the past. You can always see that one come out, but now flashing the Ivern. But it's going to be the Rek'Sai in the end, as predicted by you. And the Jin yet again here for Cody Sun. Going to take that one in blind. Could see the Ash come out from Ruler. And have that great of a performance on it in game one. Our first match of the day. But could just go something pretty safe like the Ezreal. Now the Ash is banned. That's why we see Jin so high priority. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's why Jin rises a little bit. Uh, I don't think Jin is necessarily super powerful on this patch. I like the build Cody Sun one. It wasn't the uh, the better scaling build. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't the lethality based build that we saw in Series One from the Vega Squadron AD carry. It was more about the Infinity Edge and the more standard build that has been going around. So I'm gonna stick with that Jin, and that's oh, a locked wow. in Talia on patch 623. Now, this is not something I expect to see well, at all, and that's a really big situation, Achilles, because, I mean, there are going to be some compensation buffs in the future for Talia. I did not expect to see her right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit of a bold one coming out here. We haven't seen Talia in quite some time. So having Crown go back to this pick, really, really intriguing. Uh, Talia, when she had her Q, basically gutted. It was the extra damage to minions, her push pressure, and then a global that made her such a big pick you know, just before we went into the standard lane meta. Have not seen her at all. Dropped off a cliff and then some. And now, out of nowhere, Crown has clearly been practicing this. And Crown's work ethic is something that was clearly on point, both in the qualifiers for Worlds and Worlds. He really refined his champion pool. Sure, he played a lot of Victor, but he grew an extended bench to complement what became a must-ban Victor. Ooh. That being said, Immortals have put together a lot of the power that they were able to field in the first series of the day. I imagine it's just going to be one of those capable tanks. We already saw Maokai want some QV and it is locked in, but the big variable here to me is this Talia. It's not a pick that anyone would have expected to be even once in this tournament. And after four mid lane bans and the blind pick of Orianna, Brown's got something special to show us. Simon, so, mean, what do you think is the, you know, the thought process here behind this Talia pick going into the Orianna? Is it just to outshove her and constantly be harassing her? Uh, just you know, pelting the rocks at her? Or is it going to be all about uh, you know, the macro play, riding in on that rock wall and then just setting up, you know, cutting off uh, you know, this very immobile Jin? Well, it was really easy to give color points when Talia was last in the meta because she outshoved everyone. Level one, level two, goodbye minion wave. Even someone like Victor was like, what's going on here? The minion wave's gone. It's not a story anymore. You can push well, but not to the degree you could before. So I think it is much more impetus on making the global plays, trying to find situations to push, maybe getting a blue buff advantage, and then making those globals work. Before, the global was a bonus. Now the global is so much of the power in her kit that sure, she has some zone control and some shove, 
but it's all about making that ultimate the Weaver's War work. Well, this is definitely going to be a bit of a treat here on both sides. Crown coming in with this pick that we did not expect, and we get to see Ole's Thresh, which is also going to be a nice one. They had a good game on that part of the last. We'll see if he can hold up to it. Let's see if Immortals can put a win on the border. If Samsung are going to bounce back, let's go ahead and get onto the rift for game one in this best of three. All right, here we are on Summoner's Rift. Mortals on the blue side, Samsung on the red. Looks like it's going to be fanning out across the map in a five point along the river. Not going to see any of those five man bot brush antics. But this is the one everyone wants to see. Crown on your screen. Not just the player who, of course, impressed so many people at Worlds, but specifically the Talia pick that fell off a cliff. It's kind of low appropriate given her rock riding. <laughs> Yeah, just I mean, it was like one of those things where she was there and then suddenly she just disappeared. But I mean, she was everywhere and literally like you had to eat a milk cartons to be like, where is Talia? Where did she go? 100% pick man to just 100% go. Not even remotely wanted. And that's why why now? Why 623? Nothing about the items, nothing about her current balance state really screams must pick Talia. You know, start to think about which picks we're not taking here. I would have expected the Cassiopeia, right? Cassiopeia versus Ariana, that makes sense, given all the mid lane bans. Cassiopeia was banned in the previous series against Immortals by JT, but was not a ban in this series. Yep. But, well, we're going to be trying something new here, so we'll see how Samsung play this one out. Because honestly, I'm not worried about Crown's performance on Talia. I'm just... Uh, more concerned is how Samsung is going to play this as a team because it, you know they didn't really get that buff until uh, the 40 minute mark or so in the first game of the day. Only already trying to go a little bit aggressive here on the court JJ and poke him down. Started out with a play so doesn't have the death sentence yet. The mindset of Alea I think is pretty transparent even in his first series and now second series as a player on Immortals. Very aggressive mindset, loved all the playmaking on Bard. Obviously Similar playmaking without the uh, magical journey for going through walls is available on this Thresh and this bot lane. You know, it's completely new. Uh, Lei never played in an LCS region and then Cody Sun stepping up from Challenger. And it's against Ruler and Core JJ. Ruler obviously on the newer side as well. Oh. Ambition's top. D always difficult to take down a Poppy. I Flame going to get slowed up, but he can't dash in. <laughs> There's the W's there for Flame, so he keeps himself safe. And it just takes a small amount of damage from that Sonic Wave. And Kube didn't wasn't hit level 3, so I don't believe he actually even had Twisted Advance. So, you know, good that it, Ambition's showing some attention, but no benefit to that gank. Yep. Zardok gets his red buff, could roam over and try to go for the blue, perhaps, in the enemy jungle. But it looks like he's just going to be working his way through those Raptors at the moment. That'll take him a little while. And we'll see what kind of build he wants to go. Did a very selfless build. Uh, in that last game, Ruby Sightstone to start things off. Then go for, you know, that TM at early. We sometimes see from Rek'Sai players, so uh, definitely was playing for the team. So that's another one. You know, you mentioned how much Flame has changed as far as his, uh, his style goes playing for the team. But uh, Darnock as well, kind of conforming to that. So maybe the coaching, uh, you know, on the side of portals with Hermes is really paying off. I mean, obviously the Flame is a much longer transition. He went from yes, being yeah. the carry top laner to more of a, a team player. Uh, Dardock always had flashes of playing around the team and then were in and out of game issues that again were very clear from breaking point. Lay looking for that playmaking. Yeah, goes in for the play. They have the Nilly Flores they connect it as well as the knockup. Death sentence in court JJ. Doesn't stand a chance. He goes down, loses both of his summoner spells. Both from Ole and the flash from Dardock, but overall first blood for mortals gonna be quite nice. That's going to be 700 gold in the lead for these guys on the board as they start to chip away at this tier 1 turret. And it's just very easy to set up the deadly flourishes from 
the Jin when you have Thresh on the lineup. Flash deaths, uh, Flash uh, E, Flash Flay is almost no reaction time available whatsoever. Darduck in the right place, Mechanics on point, and Olay being a playmaker and also having near fluent English. Clearly there's been no time lag that's required for him to really integrate into this Immortals lineup. A day and a half, no problem. It's good to go. You know, he's probably played with them for longer than a day and a half, let's be real. Oh uh, yeah, trial period and, uh, and whatnot. But even then, I think it's been less than a week. And there were a lot so. of names bandied around for Immortal support. Pickaboo was one of them. Kasing was another one. There's a lot of rumors about where they would go. Nobody would have chosen LA if you gave a lineup of names. Obviously, not a lot of people know him, given that he's been playing in Brazil and these like lower, uh, lower uh, public consciousness leagues. But he's come in and I think already made a bit of a name for himself. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, looking at the right threat, there was so many people asking, like, you know, I think I know this this guy, but I don't know where I know him from. Uh, so I, it definitely ha he has had that reception, but I think that this showing here at IM, if they can continue this aggression and, you know, not be punished for it, uh, I think that Ole will find that he has a lot of fans in North America after this set if they walk away with a victory. And even if they don't, uh, he still has, you know, put on a, a showing so far just in, you know, one game and then five minutes of this one. I mean, fandom is an important thing to talk about, Achilles, because when you're really playing with rosters, like Samsung fans will stay around with this Samsung lineup. 2016 Samsung fans, it's inevitable there'll be a 2017 Samsung fan, but Immortals have changed the cornerstones of what made their team. One year as a professional team defined by their duo, Rainover and Hooney. Uh, Pubelta obviously was a member of the roster, but the team was, you know, a Hooney-focused team as is often the way, and then Hooney's gone. So it was no guarantee that if you were a 2016 Immortals fan, you would quickly jump to a 2017 Immortals fan, but choosing to come to this event and showing a good level of performance is the sort of thing you need to do when you're changing the core of your lineup because maybe fans will stick around, and I'm given the brand of League of Legends they've been playing. So far, so good. Yep. It's been pretty good. Ruler, I don't want to keep up. And CS, of course, has those mystic shots that he can fire off at a safe distance. But now Dardoch, ooh, actually going to find Ambition and Crown here in the jungle. Raffle Bird's not going to connect. Gets a little bit of that threaded volley in the face. Work him down to about half HP. So he's going to have to hightail it out of the river. Nice little find, but overall, no gain going to be ground for Samsung. Really interesting to see when we get back to Crown what he's maxing. Uh, Unraveled Earth is a potential max uh, when it comes to shoving. Doesn't feel like Threaded Volley, which of course was the max back when it did extra damage to minions, is necessarily the first max. One of the reasons Talia completely fell off is that Q and E were nerfed at the same time, so she really had a lot of problems when it came to shoving, so we can't take for granted that it will be a Q max. Uh -oh. Potential for 3v3 in bot lane. Yeah, we have Dardoch waiting in the wings, and now Ambition roaming in. Don't think he's been spotted yet. JJ going forward. That's going to be the Lantern thrown out to try to drag him in, Ole. Just jumped out a little bit of it. Has that shield and Ambition. He's going to get worked pretty low. Hook lands on the core, JJ. Don't have the play to knock him back in. It's just going to be a trade of damage across the board. No one wanting to commit further for that. Health bars on supports, pretty even. Dardoch had the extra information, given that he spotted them with the Tremor Sense, but can just ult to top, and now get some extra caps. So, you know, has the information, at least indeed a record on the bot side, and here goes the jungling. So happy times for Dardoch. Yep, be able to hand over that blue buff. You can see Crown starting with a roam up to the top side of the map. Might be looking for something with the Weaver's Wall, but he spotted out. There's still a Q max. Yep, there, there is that Weaver's Wall. Throw it out, jumps off, actually. Doesn't want to ride it all the way in, so he's not caught underneath that turret. Flame gonna get seismic shoved back in, takes a little bit of damage, but doesn't have to blow the flash. And he'll make it out safely, and they get that ultimate down from ground. So Weaver's Wall, not something that they have to worry about for some time. Yeah, I mean, it was a good Weaver's Wall in the context, but realistically couldn't ride it to get the kill. Yeah. Taking down a Bami Cinder uh, Flame on this Poppy early in the game was always gonna be difficult, but just an opening salvo. It's a mind game. Now the next time he exits mid lane, Flame's gonna be asking those questions, so. See if they can translate on that particular pressure they're trying to show. Flames had a little bit of a struggle in this top lane, as we can see. He's already had two visits from the jungler and none from Dardock or his mid laner. Yep. Oh, Paul Belter though, Dragon's Rage Kick, Sonic Wave connects, and there it is, Ambition setting up the first kill here for Samsung. Yeah, so it's clean stuff that we didn't see from Ambition and Crown in game one, so that's good to see. They're gonna try and parlay that also into the Mountain Drake. Yeah, Ruler and Core JJ roaming over to this way. Dardoch 
Hovering around the red buff, but there's a lot of members of Samsung, and I think they're just going to go ahead and concede this one. Likely have the you know, knowledge that this is transpiring, but don't want to go in to contest. So first Dragon goes down, it looks like our second one will be another Mountain Drake to follow. We're going to see the replay. Very nice stuff from Ambition. Doesn't take any chances. Opens with the passion to kick. At that point, nowhere for Pavel to go. No need to use any summoners. Clean stuff from Ambition on the Lee Sin. It's always been a pick for him. Even when he was a mid laner, his off-roll champion was Jungler playing Lee Sin specifically. So yep. Lee Sin mechanics not in doubt. And good sign for Samsung. Already leveling up their early game, which is a big question mark for them against Vegas Squadron. Yeah, definitely liking him on this Lee Sin more so than on the Olaf. Just wasn't uh, that room for that big playmaking potential. So. I just don't feel like Olaf's particularly strong right now. Again, because he can't abuse the true and only tank keystone, which is that Courage of the Colossus. So obviously I'm stuck in ELO Hell, so I, I don't get the full exposure, but you're significantly higher up on the Korean ladder for Papa Smithy. So what is, uh, what is the current state of something like Kha'Zix? Because we know this is something that Ambition used to run in mid lane, so he's familiar with that champion. Is there any hope of seeing that come out in the jungle? I mean, the solo queue specials are always kind of finicky because it feels like the likes of Vayne and Kha'Zix have to be at such a power level that they're so overpowered that they make sense in, in competitive. Samsung are really oh, investing boy. here. Yeah, they are. It's a Sonic Wave in on the Ole. They're just going to burn him down. He flashes in underneath the turret, drops the box. It's a hook in onto Cube. Root him down. Oh, oh, nice play by Ole. Showed off that mechanical prowess, but it's not enough to keep himself alive. Meanwhile, Turret is going to finish off Ambition, so Dardock is able to answer one back. It's a nice unburrow knockup on multiple members of Samsung, but in the end, that's still going to be the bottom lane of Immortals going down, which is a kill advantage over to Samsung. Still slightly behind in gold, but they are really equalizing the count at the moment. Again, remember the criticism in game one was that Cube was not using his teleport effectively this time in the right place at the right time. They stack here, no teleport available from Poppy, and Dardock has to invest his flash just to get a kill on Ambition, who took four turret shots over the course of this dive. So whether that's worth or not, kind of up in the air, given that Rek'Sai is so flash dependent on ganks, so uh, has to invest a flash just to spare some of the blushes. Big advantage to Samsung. Yeah. And that was just uh, not much you could do if you were Ole and Cody's son just getting collapsed on like that. So unfortunate for them, but Samsung continuing to move forward, still down very slightly in the gold. But making moves like that is what they need to do. So showing, you know, better decision making early on in the game than when we saw them at the start of the day against Vegas Squadron. I mean, he didn't need to do a VOD review as Samsung to understand what the problem was. The <laughs> early game was pretty shocking. Uh, we know that they're capable of so much more, so clearly they had some words leveled up. Which is good to see. This should be a really exciting best of three. I'd love to see it go all three games because oh, for sure. then we get more information. We're already getting a Talia out of nowhere. We're already seeing some really innovative pathing and item decisions. This tournament is really the true preview. That's why I said it's kind of like shaking the presents before Christmas morning. We're not going to unwrap the new patch. We're not going to see really or fully understand it. That will require all the leagues to start again. But we can kind of, you know, shake them and be like, okay, I guess this is probably not a sweater. This is probably, you know, some sort of toy. Like, you get some ideas. The outline of the future patches is here today. And then it somehow ends up being socks anyway. Uh, I mean, I could always, I mean, I got to the age now where, like, socks is kind of welcome. I could always use some more socks. That's what happens when you're old, Achilles. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, when I hit that point. I mean, I can buy all the things I want, and, like, I forget to buy the socks, you know? Uh, so the memory, so you're, what you're telling me is the memory is going with the age well. Mem boom over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, looks like I have a lot of fun things to look forward to oh, as baby. I get older. I turned 30 in January. Getting old, man. Getting old. I'll have uh, six years to wait for that one, so I'll enjoy it while it lasts. Uh, Dardock, paying a visit down the bottom, not going to be able to find anything. They're still just barely maintaining that very slight lead, that little edge out ahead of Samsung that they have. But Dardock actually going to find Ambition. Oh, they're both going to go over the wall with that cone. Now Ambition going low, down to half HP. Crown's going to be the first one to arrive, though. Cuts him off with the Weaver's wall. Hook comes in, but it's not going to land. So Ole whipping that one just slightly to the right of Crown, who actually got stuck on it over the side of his own Weaver's wall. Couldn't come in, and now Flame. Nice flank TP. TP coming in. Does he get the knockup? Gets a stun in onto Ruler that's going to collapse. And Shockwave not going to find much, but they do get the Ezreal in the end. The Keeper's Verdict is going to whiff. 
as Ruler dies just before it goes off. Cody Sun trying to hound down Ambition, but he's going to flash right into the face of this Jin. Gets him with a Dragon's Rage in the end. Nice confidence coming out from the Lee Sin. Gets that kill, and that's just going to make it a one-for-one. One. Both ADs dying. It's a one-for-one, one and only four members could be invested for Samsung. So that means that Maokai stays top. They get farm, they get some damage onto this turret, and it's a better trade than we saw when four members were invested from Samsung, because that ended up being a two-for-one. And when we see the replay, the one thing I want you to talk, what I want to talk about here, after the initial tussle, is the weave as well. I actually like the crown went to the further side. He didn't actually go towards the right side, because his bot lane was second to react, and kind of Ole and uh, Cody Sun would have been just right next to Crown and just killed him. Yeah. Because he went to the other side, he was free to DPS. Cody Sun had to really awkwardly flash into the Dragon, and they got some extra damage. So it looked like it was just going to be a 1 for 0, despite the numbers disparity. But Ambition turns around, still has Kick, actually uses it just for the damage at the end. Able to get out, and good stuff for Samsa. Yeah. Well, Cody feeling uh, a little too confident that he could win that trade. Couldn't get the Deadly Flourish off in time, but even then... I don't think it would have been enough. And Ole just couldn't get there. Good time to save him with that dark passage. So just both 80s going down 0 2 3 for Cody Sun. 0 1 and 2 for Ruler. And CS hovering around even as that wave comes in. So they should be pretty much the same. Tardock's looking for another one of those visits, but sort of by two war. wards actually on the way. <laughs> those are Rek'Sai wards right there. Yes. Very limited times where you have to place them in those like, in those areas. Now Dardock gets jumped on, gets the Umpero on, and Ambition has that Dark Passage. They'll take that out to safety. And Ambition will just be like, all right, I'll just kill this Kettle Crab. So they'll have some nice semi-permanent vision you can around the Dragon. You really see the, the wealth of difference between Samsung and J-Team. You know, all the kind of predictable dives that Rek'Sai's making have been well scouted out by Samsung. You know, J-Team really struggled on the Rift. Only a best of one, but a lot a lot of levels of issues that I don't think can be corrected in just, you know, a couple of hours in between series. But yeah. Samsung, they had one big problem that was their early game and some of their execution. They seem to have fixed that and are playing on a much higher level in this series. But, as you can see, still very even. Yep. First brick, though, still available for either side to claim. But Samsung in a significantly stronger position to get that little burst of gold is... Bottom turret down to half, and Seen this before. going down, and yeah, looks like they're just going to do this repeat gank, but oh, Cody Sun, he's going to open up with his turret call, trying to get on a ruler, lands most of those shots, now the Void Rush coming through from Dardock, can he make the difference, Cody Sun cut off by that Weaver's Wall, he's going to go down as is Ole, and yet again, Dardock, the only one left underneath this turret, this time uh, with four members of Samsung Galaxy there to greet him, he's going to have to hightail it out of there, and that will be the first turret going down, Flame has that Poppy just not able to work this thing yes. down quickly enough. The crown is yeah, you know, basically twisted fate on this Talia. We talked about how important the Weaver's Wall usage is after the free shove was taken away with nerfs to Q&E. Ghosted just to be in position to set up the Weaver's Wall. And then it was a five-man collapse and no way for Orianna to counter the run. You see Orianna in mid. She thinks, okay, I guess the Talia's going to get there. But Talia just... Motors are way down super fast. It's five members. It doesn't matter that Dardock was smart to port into the bot lane. Really, really clean stuff from Samsung. They get the objective they're looking for. And even though Poppy takes top turret, remember, the top turret from the Samsung side of things is only three or four hits away from going down itself. Yeah, so they can trade that one. Plus, they get that first brick gold coming through. So that's going to put Samsung in a pretty comfortable position here. It's just about a 1,000 gold, so nothing insurmountable. It's nothing, uh, you know... As crazy as what we saw from Immortals versus J Team in the last game, but uh, it's still a lead. And now they have two Mountain Drakes under their belt, so, uh, you know, knocking down those tier two towers when it comes down to it, it's going to be that much easier for them. This will also mean, given that we're talking about Talia, that you can happily park Talia in a side lane and know that she will react even without teleports, so or double mobility summoners, and then we'll be able to weave his wall, at least, you know, once again, about destiny range to the mid lane. They will continue the split lane. They tried this with Victor the last time out, who were punished for a couple of times with Vega Squadron. A uh, little bit different with Talia. He's running his way in, but you can see, even with Cor just Core JJ there for the you know the majority of the wave clear, the Mantra Q is enough. Now Crown running in, that's going to be the Weaver's Wall coming through. They're trying to cut them off and keep them in front of this turret, but there's not really a way for uh, Samsung to... Crown's actually stuck there. Yeah, he's got himself pinned inside of the Raptor, Oops. so... Definitely not going to be getting much off of that Weaver's Wall. No one saw that one, don't worry about it. But 
Hey, they kept their tier one turret, so at least that's something. Mount guys walk down remember. Oh, Shockwave drags in both. It's gonna be deadly flourish coming in. Locks up Ambition, now the box coming down. Ole, he will fall. Ambition one hit from dead. Dardock goes in, trying to trade this back, and Cody's on actually able to bend a bullet around Cube to get that last shot through. Take out the Lee Sin. So far, one for one. They're looking for more. Cube going back in with a twisted advance. Has to flash out immediately. Cody Sun going low. Crown trying to finish him off with his reddit volley. A couple more hits would do it, but he's not able to find it. Ruler doesn't quite have the true shot barrage just yet. A couple more mystic shots would reset the cooldown for him, but you could see Immortals scattering to the wind. Do not want to get caught out by that Ezreal ultimate, but actually, that is going to be. An interruption there by Cordia. The not able to find the kill. Just too late. Yeah, alt sweeps through. Not going to hit Pobelter inside the fountain. They'll heal up, but look at this Samsung. They're going to be able to take out that tier 2 tower. We'll watch this replay. Though. And with the engage, we thought, okay, this is the fight Immortals are looking for, but the flashing health bars, the fact that they can't complete any more kills than Ambition, is what really costs Samsung here. Target selection from Flame. He goes for the closest to his allies. That was the Maokai. And although Maokai almost falls, Twisted Advance flashes out, and suddenly everyone is a couple of hits, you know, an auto attack from Ezreal away from death. That means they all have to kite in different directions. They lose two turrets. Prey on a different day might have flashed aggressively and gone for some exit kills there. Ruler goes the safer option, and they still get two, two turrets in the mid lane. So they still get a massive win to Samsung, even if they can't pad the kill score for their Ezreal. Yeah. That was, uh, that's one of those frustrating moments when you're a ruler and like you're just a couple seconds away from that true shot barrage and you see the lineup and you just can't get it to get that quadra kill instantly. But they still get the two times. That's the thing is that if they had been repelled, if they had just gone back, you know there would be frustration as if you're ruling. Like, yeah. I could have, you know, I thought about going in with my flash, but I didn't do it. We didn't get anything. He made the team choice. He pulled back, team called uh -huh. to kill turrets. They did that. Now they're looking for more. Remember, there's a lot of space here with no turrets. And Kube is going to be wrapping around for the side. Nice! Kick. Dragon's Rage going to knock up Pole Belter. And Ole, he's going to go low. Looks like he's going to be the first one to pick. He pick, be picked off. Poor JJ comes up with a kill. Flame will throw out the Keeper's Verdict. Does eject Kube from the fight, but the rest Ambition. of the Royals are going low. Ambition coming around the sidelines. And Crown throwing out the threat and volley. Time and time again, it's going to be a double kill coming through. Ambition following through on that Sonic Wave does connect them in with Dardock, and Flame is going to fall. That's four members of Immortals picked off, and Samsung, I think they're just going to make a beeline over to this Baron at 22 minutes. Sometimes it all lines up for the Lee The kick there was the true MVP. Really nice Weaver's Wall. Nowhere to go, and then Ambition continues his good work coming around the back line. Clean stuff from Samsung. High expectations we had for them this tournament. Vindicated. Dardock's alive, so the Baron's not necessarily inked in, but damned if it is from Pencil in. Put a pass Dardock to go for the steal, but he can't get there in time. And now he's got to be worried about getting out of here alive, which I just don't think is possible for him. Gets rooted down, and Vision's going to put another one on the board. And Ole coming in to try to get a dark passage out to Dardock to take him to safety. He'll be able to walk away. Almost seemed like a mercy uh, showing there from Crown, not pursuing for the kill, but take a look at that Dragon's Rage. That is just beautiful. Pobelta takes 700 damage because of the extra health that Stush has built. And, you know, basically gets dps out, running the whole time, and then the Weaver's Wall stops the exit, and Pobelta and Cody Sun are stopped with nowhere to go. That's what allows Ambition to come around the back. I've been really impressed with Crown and the Weaver's Wall. You don't get a free pass. You can't just QE and then just half be half assed, I guess you'd say, with the Weaver's Wall. You need to fully commit with it. You need to really understand where to put it. And so far, Crown has been on top of his game. That he has. It's been a, a really good showing from him and just Samsung uh, in general, really bouncing back from that first game of the day. And now we get the interesting question, Achilles. We saw the smiling face, we saw the confidence of uh -oh. Ambition. you're gonna get locked up. Shockwave comes through, but he's able to dash away on to core JJ and keep himself safe. So even with that catch, with everything invested, really, uh, you know, with the Shockwave, they still can't finish him off. Yeah. Uh, Samsung moving in towards this tier two. Oh, Ruler, Hi. able to finish off Cody, Sun flourishing forward with that E into the Mystic shot. Now Flame uses Keeper's Verdict, but he's just not tanky enough. He's gonna fall, and Crown comes up with the kill. It's gonna be another turret going down with the Baron-powered minions. Samsung, they might be looking for an inhibitor here. Pre-25 minutes. Yeah, Ambition and the rest of Samsung are just looking to end the game as fast as possible. I've been impressed with how much snowballing they've been able to do in this game. We may not get the answer to it in this game, Achilles, but the question in this series is we saw how good IMT are, Immortals are, when they're ahead. How good are they when they're behind? 
like this because it's a very different type of shotgun. It's very different for mentality, especially as a new team when you're not winning. Yeah. Well, as stated before, you know, these guys, they're, think they're, they're looking at this as, you know, team building and just working on their synergy. Not so much, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not the playoffs for them, it's not Worlds. It's still important, but they're not going to put that much emphasis on a loss. But the question, the, the question mark for them, as we see Ruler there, that was the aggressive clash we were yeah. looking for in the previous fight. But the question mark for Immortals is not whether they can beat teams. It's not whether they lose to Samsung. They should lose to Samsung. Samsung should be the best team at this tournament. The question for Immortals is how can they come back from a loss? Do they open up game two and still have a good early game? Do they show any visible tilt or struggles from being beaten? That's a much more interesting thing given that the big question mark around some of these players, Flame and Dardock included, has been mental strength. Yeah. Well, we very well may be finding out in just a little bit here. As looks like Samsung might be slated to win this game within this next I five mean, minutes. Third gold lead, uh, yeah. over 10,000. Super Creep's coming in, Samsung running it down mid, but in a positive way. Dardock's gonna go in, shock nice is there, Cloud's going low. He's able to make it out from now, but they're sticking to him like glue, and the current call shots come through. They're able to kill that, kill off the Talia. Kiwi coming with a teleport, jumps on the Dardock, but Flame goes forward, knocks up three with the Keeper's Verdict. Ruler going low, one more shot would finish him up, but Kiwi still just sticking onto Bow Belter. They're able to find the kill and onto Dardock as well. A double kill coming through from the Mount Guy, and Flame in the back line, not able to do anything. They're gonna lose three, they're gonna lose another inhibitor as it's just Cody's son left on the side of Immortals. And Samsung, they might just end it right here if they can. That was actually a really good engage from Immortals. They did exactly what they needed to, but the gold lead was the big answer there. So in a different game, it's good to see them go for the engage. They saw Maokai was top, they got the pick, but unfortunately were too far behind. Their turrets will go down. Three mountain drakes means you have to make an engage straight away. So commend, I really commend Immortals for going in, but between the three mountain drakes and the gold lead, it's going to be the win <laughs> for Samsung. Well, gets a final. Two kills there for Cody Sun to pad the KDA. But in the end, Immortals goes down 7 to 19. A pretty colossal win for Samsung. And they end up with just shy of 13,000 gold as an advantage. So a much stronger showing for this team. And like you said, can Immortals bounce back or will?